Good morning. My name is Justin Walls. I teach freshman religion here. I also coach the JV boys basketball team and help out in the baseball program. We begin our service in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our worship theme this week has been questioning the cross that comes before the crown of joy. So far in chapel this week, we have been reminded by Mr. Ricky uh, that it's painful to separate yourselves and remove yourselves from the cross and Christ. Uh, on Tuesday, Mr. Maddox uh, talked about the fact that uh, we should not indulge in our sinful desires and not conform to the patterns of this world. Yesterday, Mr. Redu talked about how Job um, kind of had a pity party for himself and thought that he knew uh, more than God did and God had to put him in his place. Uh, yet here we are today, about to be reminded once again about how we need to put our focus on God and trust in him. Why? Because all too often, we are people that constantly need to be reminded and find evidence that God is truly with us and that he is there for us. And so our theme for today is doubt God's help. There is so much in this world that can make us feel anxious. Even when we know the truth, as we are supposed to be, because we're here at Wisco and saying we're Christians, and so we know the truth. We know that God is in control of everything, but it still can be a daily battle in our hearts and in our minds. I'm sure that if you ask any adult uh, if they are truthful, they would probably tell you of a time in their lives when they themselves sinfully doubted or questioned God's help. I can remember mine. And I don't share this story so that you feel sorry for me or anything like that. It's just for learning purposes to prove the point about how God is there. Uh, it was the fall of 2008, all the way to about mm, maybe August of 2009. Um, my wife and I just had gotten word from doctors that we were unable to have children. And of course, that was devastating news to my wife and I. Um, and... That was not what we had planned for our lives. We both came from decent-sized families, and that was part of what you do. You get married, you have kids. Um, and so there was a stretch there where I was questioning God, wondering why. It seems like everybody else can have children the natural way, but we can't. And so there was denial. There was, I refuse to listen to the doctors. Okay? And after maybe months of questioning God, my wife finally convinced me that probably the only option and the best option for us to have children was through adoption. And so she convinced me that that's what we should do. So in December of 2008, we started the adoption process. There were classes that we needed to go to, and you can imagine, right, the frustration of going to three hours worth of classes on Saturdays, right? taking these classes just to have a child, where naturally you wouldn't have to go to any kind of classes. And so the height of my frustration probably hit in March of 2009. Our Wisco basketball team was on a historic march through, no pun intended, through the boys' state tournament. Got all the way to the championship game, the very first championship game of boys' basketball. And if you know anything about my family and basketball, well, you know that that would have been pretty significant. But instead of being at the championship game watching history, I was there, stuck on a Saturday, in class. I was sitting there being taught with a baby doll how to change the diapers properly, how to burp a child properly, also how to carry a baby properly, like a football, right? And then, on top of that, we went outside and we put the child safely into a car seat. You can imagine my frustration, right? Because if only God would have just allowed my wife and I to have a child the natural way, <laughs> I would never have missed the championship. 
that would never have gone through all of these things and classes when no one else has to. Now, if you can't remember an account in your life of when that happened, well, that's why we have the Bible. We can learn from the many problems that the Old Testament Israelites had. One of theirs was they constantly would turn to their own ways rather than God. Some examples of that, just quickly. We got Abraham and Sarah, right? Promised a child. They decided to do it their own way. It didn't work out for them. Abraham with Hagar had Ishmael. There was problems, right? Uh, Continuing on, Jacob stealing the birthright from his brother, right? Not trusting in God that he would give it to him even though God promised, right? And then one of my favorite sections of the Bible, the 430 years-ish of the judges, where you constantly had the Israelites turning to idolatry, God bringing them back, sending a judge. The judge would die, and they would go right back into that sin, and God would send people to punish them and conquer them. And those are the examples, how they slipped back into that problem each and every single time. They lacked the faith in God, They lacked relying on God's strength, care, and protection. Now, all too often when we hear those stories of the Old Testament, sometimes we forget, and sometimes we can be too judgmental. And we say, how can they do that? All those things that God did for them, how can they not see God's work at hand? But that's when we got to look at ourselves. That's when we need to take a good, hard look at ourselves. How often do we focus maybe on our material wealth, our human wisdom, our education sometimes, our own survival skills, or something else instead of focusing on God? So many who claim to know God will try and be the fix-it guy instead of simply just turning to God for help. We lose our focus because we're so distracted with all the things that we can never really fully control. And so, just like God promised the Israelites, he also promises us to take care of us, to deliver us. His promises are exactly the same. And in our reading for today, Psalm 121, it is the same. We are reminded again of the promises of God that he is going to strengthen us, he's going to protect us. As we sing our psalm today, uh, everybody will sing the refrain, and the glory be to the Father, and our worship leaders will sing the verses of the psalm.
few of the verses that were sung about in our psalm here that I would like to highlight just again as a source of strength for us is verse 2. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Right? Who is our help? It's the Lord who made heaven and earth. Right? He's always with us. He breathes help. He breathes strength into our day and even into our souls. Another verse, those last two verses that I like to concentrate on too and highlight. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going both now and forevermore. Right, what a comfort to know that God is there protecting us against all evil. Not some evil, but all and all the time. He has the final say over our lives. The fear of death, the fear of disease, hardships, they lost their sting, right? God is the power, and he is much greater than that. And he is the keeper of our souls today and forever. It's amazing how many times we need to be reminded of things before we can actually believe them, trust them, like how God is always in control. We see it in the Old Testament. We saw it in the Psalm. You see, people won't ever be the answer for our every need. Money can't ever satisfy the deep void that is left. Only God can fill that void. This world will never be free of all conflict. We know that. The governments will never fix all our problems. They can't. Because no matter who's president, no matter what we face in this life, God is still in control. He is ruling on his throne over everything. The reason he does all this is pretty simple. He loves you. Just like he loves the Israelites in the Old Testament, just like he loves you, we are his special people. He has a track record to prove it. Just read the Bible. Some of you may know the ending to my adoption story. For those that don't, there it is. Tyson was born... Two weeks, well, we found out about Tyson being born two weeks before he was actually born. We got a call from the agency that said, hey, you're going to have a child, and somebody has chosen you, right? And that's the exact moment where God told me, Justin, shut up, stop complaining, stop doubting, be still, and know that I am God. And then three years later, his half-brother Carter was born, right? And once again, the idea is that you can see in your life, if you find it, if you look for it, right, where God does what he promises and he even gives us more than what we could ever imagine. We will close today with our hymn. Everyone will sing verses 1, 3, and 5, and the worship leaders will sing verse 2 and 4.
Take care. Be good. You're dismissed.